When I talk to brand owners, they're usually smaller companies. They're companies that don't have a huge marketing team. They might not have a ton of resources, but we're all looking at a million opportunities for paid media. We see a million platforms, a million possibilities, and we can't necessarily handle them all. Well, myself, me, I feel like maybe I should focus on just a few. I shouldn't even try to worry about all of them. Our guest today actually has a different opinion. And he has that opinion based on a lot of experience. So in this episode today, we're gonna talk about why you may potentially think about running paid ads or paid media on all platforms and exactly what that might mean for your brand. It's gonna be a good episode. We're gonna have a lot of questions myself as I continue to learn. Make sure to listen to the end. Here we go. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the AMPM podcast. I'm your host, Tim Jordan, and today we're talking about buying traffic. Now, for most of us that are listening, we're e-commerce sellers, and we understand roughly what that means, right? If it's on a platform like Amazon or Walmart or eBay, we're buying ads, right? It's PPC. If we are trying to drive traffic to a website, it could be social media ads. It could be uh, Google search ads. There's a million different ways to buy traffic. Now, in this episode, we're not going to get too deep into actually how to do that. We're not going to talk about efficient buying practices, and we're not going to talk about, you know, copy versus keywords and all that good stuff. What we're talking about is this question that I'm frequently asked, which is, do I buy media everywhere? Do I buy placement everywhere? And myself, as I said in the very intro, tend to think that we can't be good at everything. Like, we need to focus on some specific applications become experts at a few instead of dabbling in many. Now, before I started actually with this episode and hit the record button, I was listening to our guest today, maybe give me some indication that I might be thinking about this wrong. And that's the best part about this podcast, right? We bring in a lot of different ideas. We bring in a lot of different expertise and we kind of give you as much information as you can to let you decide. Now, I will start off by saying that the very beginning, like the very beginning of this podcast, we're going to make the case for buying media and buying exposure on every platform. Now, as we back into the episode and as we kind of go down this rabbit hole, we're going to talk about maybe how to do that realistically and how to do it efficiently. And the answer is more complicated than just put your brand out there everywhere. It's much more complicated than that. But without further ado, let me bring in the true expert at this. His name's Kenny Gray. Welcome to the podcast. Hey, thanks for having me. And I know that we've been trying to get this podcast recorded for a while and kept running into hiccups. And that's largely just because you and I are busy, right? Small businesses, we um, have scheduling issues and stuff comes up and the kids are sick and this meeting took priority and like technology happens, all that stuff happens, right? But that kind of defines exactly who we are as like these hustler entrepreneurs, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think it's interesting that you even brought it up, too. But uh, among the whole COVID issue, everything else going on in the world, uh, you know, tracking issues in our space, uh, we're still as busy as ever. The reason I brought that up is I have a point. We can't get to everything. We can't do everything. We can't be experts at everything. I can't even get on all the time and, and make the scheduled podcast recordings, right? There's stuff that changes all the time. And we're thinking about selling our products. Now, I will say Kenny has experience in not just selling products. He's got uh, experience in selling a lot of things digitally and online. But like for myself, when I'm selling a product, I try to not get tunnel vision and focus on only one thing. I like to think, hey, there's a bigger, wider world. We need to expand a little bit. But I also try not to get too distracted, like shiny object syndrome. The way my brain works is like a little puppy dog chasing butterflies in a field full of flowers, right? Like I'm jumping all over like crazy. I'm chasing everything. And for myself and even for like uh, the, the people that I consult with, I have been telling people, hey, maybe you need to figure out where you're good at, like where your ads are working best at and focus on those. And Kenny, I understand that's not necessarily your idea. You have a little differing opinion. You have some different strategies. Uh, before we get into that, let's talk about where you come from. I know that you come from traditional digital marketing, you even have experience working as a media buyer for companies like the Golf Channel, right? So some some pretty big names here. But how did you end up uh, kind of getting down this path into entrepreneurism yourself and starting this agency, which is great media? Yeah, so uh, I guess like 
all of us, I was pretty ambitious and I, I knew at the end of the day I wanted to work for myself or I wanted to take on a lot of responsibility and wear plenty of hats where I could learn a little bit of everything. Um, so it all really started, yeah, with the Golf Channel, uh, a lot of SEO, a lot of analytics, a little bit on the media side. Uh, that was really just to get my foot in the door where I got a role with a smaller agency where I got to be you know, put right in as a media buyer where I was in the accounts every day. I was uh, consulting on the strategy, coming up with the creatives. Uh, I got to do a lot there. And then eventually I just asked, I'm like, I want to do a little email. Uh, I want to learn how to build a Shopify store. I want to do the SMS. I want to do more and more. Uh, and eventually, you know, I outgrew that agency. I started freelancing uh, and then I started outgrowing freelancing. And now I'm building a team. I'm trying to, you know, get our name out there. I'm trying to help all, more brands, just more from uh, internally versus, you know, through uh, other outlets. Yeah, I love that. And I mentioned it before, you've actually done media buying and digital marketing across a lot of different industries, right? So it's not just e-commerce. Oh, yeah. What else have you worked in? So I guess like the first ones we really got into was uh, when keto was huge. We do the keto PDFs. We do keto supplements. Uh, and that just kind of opened the door. Then we got into fitness, uh, apparel, uh, larger supplement companies. Uh, then it kind of rolled into some lead generation. Uh, we were just doing a, a huge concert that's coming up. We were selling tickets for them. Uh, lead generation uh, also falls in with like real estate. We we're looking for people who are potential franchisee owners, which is a really fun but difficult one just to actually qualify people uh, and find the right people on social media, which isn't uh, always the easiest task just to find big decision makers who have $80,000 to spend on a franchise right away. Yeah. So definitely a little bit of everything. And I love that because there are so many different silos of business, right? Like different... Um I don't know, industries, different types of selling. And sometimes we get pigeonholed into one specific type of selling or type of marketing or industry. And we don't realize in the bigger, broader world, there are other crazy things happening, right? People are figuring things out. People are making great strides. And when you have your fingers in multiple industries and multiple types of selling, it probably gives you a better perspective on how to perform some of these functions appropriately and correctly because you're getting exposure to a, a much wider world, right? So I appreciate that and I love that. And I think that that's going to definitively add value to your topic. So yeah, let's pretend I'm a client, all right? I'm a client, I'm selling an e-commerce brand, I'm selling $5 million a year, but I want to outsource my paid advertising, right? And we sit down and I say, Kenny, give me a pitch, right? I want your agency to give me a pitch. I'll tell you though, my experience has been that some of these platforms, whether it's social media or search engine or, or what influencer marketing ever, have sucked for us. So we're only focusing on two right now. If you're going to take over our strategy, do you want to go back and try to put my brand on everything? And what's your philosophy, Kenny? Is, is, is your philosophy that we should have exposure everywhere? Uh, the short answer is yes. Uh, and let me get into it. Uh, we got to think about uh, how big brands operate, even if you're a small business. Uh, the way these media platforms are working now, you don't need a large budget. Uh, you can come up with great creative, great targeting, and you can still reach your audiences and still make a, a minor impact. Obviously, you don't have like Sony's budget and you can't, you know, you don't have a million dollar budget uh, every month, but uh, we could really make $10,000, $20,000 a month work for you. Uh, and I'm going to always stick with the omnipresence marketing approach. Uh, we want to go where people are online. We are digital marketing. So people aren't just on Facebook. That's a little naive to think. People aren't only using Google. People aren't only watching long videos on YouTube. Uh, people aren't only scrolling on TikTok these days. But they are doing a little bit of all of that. We're all guilty of it. We all have multiple apps uh, that all of these platforms are also connected to. So I feel like if you're a small business and you're just like, we're only going to do Google, we're going to do shopping ads, and we're going to do uh, search terms, uh, you know, how are they getting to Google and even getting, you know, looking for your brand at all? That's where everything else would come into play. So maybe you aren't, uh, maybe you're on Facebook and you aren't getting those conversions, but maybe you're drumming up uh, some conversations, you're getting clicks, you're getting views. And if we go back to an old school, traditional marketing and advertising view, uh, we have to look at it. You have 20, 30 touch points before somebody's going to make a, you know, a purchase with you or even engage with you at all. 
So, you know, whether it be Facebook, then we follow them on Instagram, then maybe we get them to watch a video on YouTube. Then you have your short, uh, very entertaining content on TikTok. All these touch points add up. We even have clients who are doing billboards still on major highways. Why? Because that's where people are driving. That's where they are. Their eyes are locked on there. It's another touch point. You mentioned the term conversions. Right. And I think you said something effective, even if you're not getting sales conversions, you're getting branding. And I think that one of the hardest things about marketing is figuring out how to balance data with intuition. I was doing a uh, I was part of a conference in Chicago a few years ago, and there was a friend of mine who had a company and she had hung a banner on the ceiling with her logo on it. It was like seven thousand dollars just to hang this banner up. It didn't even say go to booth number this, this. It didn't say what the product was, just the logo. And I said, man, how much did that banner cost? She said $7,000 to be on the ceiling at the entrance to the McCormick Center in Chicago. And I said, how on earth are you going to know if that worked? She says, I don't. Like there's no way to actually track that. There's no data. So one of the biggest problems that I have with running digital marketing ads and, and running paid traffic to different on different platforms is that the data doesn't show that it's actually selling, right? So if I run Facebook ads all day about something and I'm not getting clicks and I'm not getting sales, or if I'm getting clicks, but not getting sales at all, like I assume that's a failure. So what you're saying is, correct me if I'm wrong, to imprint into a buyer's mind, the idea or the message or the, the concept of your brand, it takes a lot of touch points. I've heard guys like John Lawson say seven or eight, you said the term 30. So correct me if I'm wrong, but what you're saying is there is value in getting in front of people's eyeballs, even if they're not making the purchase decision right that second. And we can't backtrack it through data to know that those ads and that that very dollar that we spent converted to a certain, I don't know, amount of revenue. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and that is the difficult part. Some of it's very hard to measure or some of these metrics would cover you know, maybe 90 days, maybe 180, maybe it takes a full year of all those touch points. So brands really need to focus on their long term, long term goals, uh, you know, long term metrics, uh, just kind of like what you were saying, maybe you're getting a great click through rate, maybe you're getting a ton of uh, video views, maybe they're watching 95%, if not 100% of your videos on some of these social platforms, and they're not converting. Uh, but a lot of people shouldn't expect a day one click and then to purchase. Uh, we're a little bit more savvy on the internet and all of these digital platforms now. So uh, the day of, uh, you know, creating like a I'm with stupid t-shirt for 25 bucks and expecting a profit is kind of over as uh, we've seen with some of these tracking issues and just with all the, you know, the tighter margins with all of these companies are facing. So you want to go uh, long term here. So maybe even um, it might just be capturing an email for your email system because email is converting like crazy right now. And that's hard data. But uh, I think they all kind of play into each other. So we need to focus on that user journey. Uh, so if you're not getting conversions, maybe you shift your focus on Facebook for engagement, traffic, building up your social presence. And eventually they click over, they shop a little bit, they observe. Uh, and one day they're going to go into Google or Bing, whatever, whatever search engine they might be using. Uh, and then they're going to search for your product. And that's where they'll convert. So sometimes we see a crazy conversion rate. Uh, on Google, but that might have been from an engagement that we made 30, 60, 90 days ago. But it was also they kept seeing our video. We kept uh, hitting different uh, pain points for them. We kept facing all of their objections to eventually, hey, you know what? I paid all my bills. My credit card's all paid off. And now I'm, you know, I want to treat myself. And your service or your offer, your product, whatever it might be, might be what they decide that day. So I use an example of the brand Solo Stove. It's these stainless steel fire pits that have kind of like taken the nation by storm. It was a big thing this Christmas. I got one. And supposedly in a few weeks, I'm interviewing the CEO of that company. And one thing I'm going to ask him is, how do you know? Like, how did you know that those mountainous volumes of dollars that you spent on Facebook ads would turn a conversion? Because me, I saw Facebook ads, multiple Facebook ads, multiple creative, multiple videos, multiple message for like months before I mentioned to my wife, like, I think this thing's really cool. We should get one for your dad for Christmas. And then she bought one for him and it landed on my front porch. And I looked at the box. And I'm like, this is so cool. I wish I had one. And then she bought me one too. Right. But like, how do they know? Because you can't track that, that the dollars that they were spending six months ago for me personally to view this ad were converting enough 
like like even if it's six months down the line to make it worth it to spend those dollars up front on that platform if they're not getting immediate sale. Yeah, that's a uh, that's really difficult. That's a question we have to deal with clients uh, almost every week because everyone's like, "Why do we spend this much money and we're not seeing it right now?" Um, so for a lot of brands, you really have to come up with a good strategy. You need to poke as many holes in, in it as you can. Uh, you just need to actually plan out this work. Well, a big thing we always say with uh, my clients or you know my internal team is we want to plan the work and then we want to work the plan. Uh, you can make too many pivots, make too many adjustments. You're not really going to know what actually moved the needle for you. So you need to ha- uh, exercise patience whenever you start to go into the execution process. Um, and the biggest term I think where a lot a lot of agencies are also throwing around is media efficiency ratio. And that is a little bit more old school where it's like, hey, how much are we spending and then how much are we making? Uh, and, you know, does that make sense? We've done that with a, a supplement brand starting in July where they were doing 20, 25 grand every month. Uh, we identified the products that had very hard, high margins, uh, things that were kind of outliers that wouldn't be in straight competition with the large supplement companies. Uh, we planned our work. We worked the plan. Uh, they just had their first 100K month this month, and now they're about to hit 130K today. Which is good numbers. I love that. Mm-hmm. And what it sounds like you're saying is we can't look at an individual campaign to determine effectiveness. We have oh, no, to look you don't want to get too granular. That'll um, it'll <laughs> give you anxiety. It's going to stress you out. You're going to start changing everything, and then you're never going to figure out what's going to work. So uh, you're also bringing your offer, your product to market. That's what you can do with paid media. And you can basically test the market. Like, are you getting the clicks? Are you getting conversions over time? Uh, that's another difficult um, conversation sometimes where it's, hey, we tried this. What Everything that we're you know trying right now, it isn't working. So now we have to look at the brand, the offer, because there's plenty of times where we get great metrics on engagement, video views, but people just aren't converting. So then you kind of have to pull back kind of go through your user journey, look at your website, look at the offer. uh, And you really just got to start poking holes in it. And like, why isn't someone converting on this? Uh, You know, you can't be completely crazy if you brought it to market. (laughs) But you're saying it's not a complete loss if people are watching the videos and not buying because you're still imprinting in their head something. So you can still see the length of the video they watch. Go, man, they're still watching 45 seconds of this. Like, like we are having some benefits. So even though we can't see the sales, you're investing, right? Investing. Now you need to obviously get down to some granular level and make sure that you do have the right funnels, you do have the right offers and and all of those things. But you're saying that the branding is valuable. So if I understand what you're saying correctly, although we do need to be be careful not to say don't ever get granular, but I think what you're saying is we can look at the total number of dollars that we spend. So instead of we're spending $10,000 on Facebook and $10,000 on Instagram, well, like on the same $10,000 on Google ads, you're saying, hey, if we're spending $50,000 a month and our revenue is X, so like our total cost per acquisition is at a reasonable number and a number that we love, like maybe we need to understand that this is more or at least somewhat of an art, not only a science. And even if that Facebook ad that we're spending $10,000 a month on that's not getting conversions may actually be driving awareness to the brand and is causing organic search on Google, right? So if, if, and if we look too granular and say, well, Facebook sucks, turn it off. What we may find out is that it's going to impact our web traffic too, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, it's just kind of how I personally shop. I'm sure it's how, uh, you know, a more majority of people do shop as well. Uh, you might see the product that you really like on TikTok, but I don't really want to use TikTok's web browser. So I'm going to go over to Google. I'm going to Google it, do my own research, maybe look up some reviews, maybe look at some competitors. Uh, and that's just the reality of how the user journey and the Internet works now, because we all are familiar with that process. Before, yeah, one day click and purchase was a little bit more reasonable, but now uh, people are a little more skeptical and they want to make sure they're working with a trusted brand and they're not going to have to call their credit card company. There's a lot of different uh, levers to pull, a lot of different angles to consider. And I guess the a great example of this you already brought up, which is the billboard on the side of the road, right? Oh, yeah, someone, there's no way to judge that one. <laughs> no way to judge that one, absolutely. But it obviously works because people spend a ton of money on billboards and obviously, you know, Coca-Cola still has billboards, you know, around the area I live that doesn't have any call to action, no website. It's just the logo. 
Yeah. Right? And like, maybe it and, makes sense for your brand. Like uh, this billboard that I'm talking about, these are for um, car detailing products. Uh, what do you, when do you see billboards? When you're in your car, you yeah. see that and then you're going to, oh man, my car is filthy. It doesn't look good right now. I want it to look good. What's top coat? Uh, so it's definitely a, a big brand awareness play, but it's not like you can, all right, I see that. All right, I'm going to purchase it right now, but it's just going to be embedded in your brain next time. And then you go on to, uh, you know, social media or anything. Uh, then you're going to see the brand again. And it's like, oh, okay, like, let me give them a shot. They're all over the place. Yeah, you go to Amazon, and you're scrolling. You're like, oh, Meguiar's. I remember that car. Yeah, I've heard of them. That. Yeah, you build trust over time. So it sounds like what you're saying is too many people make the mistakes of assuming that uh, paid advertisement, paid marketing, paid placement can be, I guess, judged as success or failure based on an immediate click-through rate to purchase. But what you're saying is we need to be investing in the brand. And I've heard people say that like our cell phone is the new billboard, mm -hmm. right? So if someone is is sitting on the couch scrolling and they're seeing that, like there has to be value that with Charter Track. All right. So I also don't believe that you think that we should just recklessly throw money at every platform and every type of, of ad and all of that stuff. Um, there's a balance. Right. So let's talk specifically about products because you, you yourself said it. You said, hey, if the product makes sense, like the car detailing thing on a billboard makes some sense. Um, mm -hmm. Something else may not, right? So once you have determined that maybe one specific type of ad placement or one specific platform or one specific audience is best for the brand that you're working with or the one that you're selling, how do you balance prioritization? Like, do we say, all right, we're going to invest more money in Instagram for this, you know, female healthcare, you know, skincare item, but we're not going to completely pull out of Google ads or, or what do you do in a situation like once you've determined that one platform is better than another? Yeah. So uh, like we were talking about with your product or your just overall offer, uh, we have to think about where the demographic is going to be, uh, what they're going to be using. Um, I think an interesting example is using uh, with search engine, uh, search engines like Google and Bing. Uh, most of us use Google just by default, big name, biggest company in the world or one of the biggest. Uh, but there are a good amount of people using Bing. And I, I think a lot of people are like, why? Uh, Bing is the search engine that's installed on most new computers coming in from Microsoft. So uh, our parents, they're probably just going to type it in and they're going to hit Bing first. So they just by default, they're using Bing. They don't care. It's essentially the same idea. They're just a different platform. Well, you're but, giving uh, away one of my secrets here because a product <laughs> that is tailored towards an older generation Bing ads are like stupid cheap and nobody ever thinks about it. And the conversion rate can be ridiculously high. Like you said, it's the native browser. So it's like 60 and older is the perfect target for that. Yeah, exactly. That's where they're going to be. So if you're going for 60 and older, maybe TikTok isn't where they're going to be. <laughs> so maybe that's actually, you know, you can get to a point where like, all right, maybe I can rule that one out. You can still try and target 60 plus, maybe throw $20 a day at it, um, you know, because, you know, sometimes there's like a small group that they're still going to be looking on there. They're still going to be browsing a little bit, but not quite like the 25-year-old range right now. So you definitely have to focus. Or same idea. The older group, uh, they're definitely going to be on Facebook more versus TikTok or Instagram. So you definitely want to pay attention, break it down, like you were saying. Like, you don't want to be granular every day, but eventually you do need to get a little granular in the data uh, and then try and see where your traffic's coming from, how much you're paying for it. Uh, I think it's all beneficial in the long term, but some of it will get you uh, wins faster than others. You even said something that sounded foreign to me. You said, hey, even if it's, you know, 60 and older where, you know, being in Facebook should be your target, still throw $20 on TikTok. Do you think that $20 really matters? Do you think that if I find a platform that's not performing for me at all, from what I can tell, and going by your your statement that like every platform needs some presence. Do you still think that even if it's a platform that totally sucks it up for you, that 20 or $30 a day is still valuable just because you're getting more exposure globally? I think exposure is a big uh, term we keep throwing around as well as investing, which you keep saying. Uh, yeah, you're investing into your brand long term here because, uh, you know, the 60 year olds today, uh, it's going to be a different batch five years from now. 
Uh, and we're going to keep seeing that as these new generations, like we're, we grew up on the internet, the younger generations, they definitely grew up and they're very savvy, if not maybe even more than we are. And that's going to continue. So uh, I think for the long-term play, yeah. Uh, but is there going to be like a cutoff point? Yeah. Eventually you are going to have like a certain, reach a certain point, like, all right, I can't dedicate budget to that right now, but I wouldn't ever rule out testing it. Uh, you just don't know what you don't know when you are testing, you know, when you're buying media, basically. So this is like chess versus checkers, essentially. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, maybe three years ago, yeah, you could run something and then you'd get a, a an immediate co- a conversion and you'd be able to see the success of that campaign. Uh, and you could actually scale a brand, product, whatever it might be. Uh, but now, uh, since all of the tracking has been kind of removed and our ability to see exactly what people are doing when they do it, uh, we have to kind of focus a more traditional sense, like we're spending this much, we're getting these views, we're getting these clicks, uh, and now we're starting to see the data come in uh, down the road. Same idea with that supplement brand. We don't see the best CPAs in you know Facebook, great in Google, but over time, with the learning what the LTV of these customers are, uh, it has built up and has just self like compounded on itself. Where we're we're our first goals were like let's hit a thousand dollars a day, let's hit fifteen hundred dollars a day. Now we're steadily breaking five k days. Yesterday was like a seven k day. Uh, so they just have all this momentum built up just by uh, you know trusting the strategy, planning the work, and working that plan. Now, when we got started, I kind of set the stage that you and I were at odds. We disagreed, right? Like, I think since we have limited resources, we need to get really good and focus on one thing. And what you're saying is, no, Timmy, you're a dummy if you don't, like, try to get some some brand presence everywhere. Now, I suspect that we're actually not that far apart. And the reason I say that is because you are still focusing on focusing, right? Like, you're, you're focusing on um, maybe having a little presence on all these places, but you're still breaking down and figuring out what is working the best and spending the majority of your focus on that. And it sounds like a lot of this is based on testing. So if I had to guess, you could give some good advice on testing and that you're going to tell me if I had to guess (laughs) my crystal ball, you tell me that like when you start, you're going to have to invest a lot of focus, at least on all these platforms, make sure you're giving it a fair shake and make sure that you're giving it a fair chance. And then you're going to realign and back off after 30, 60, 90 days of testing. But if you don't invest in the testing, you're not going to know which works best. Is that right? Yeah, no, you said it perfectly. Uh, with you know paid media, you really have to test, especially we need to focus on what platform we're going to be on and what type of creatives are going to work, what type of copy works best, what landing page is going to you know load the quickest when you're using that platform's browsers. Um, so yeah, you're testing almost, uh, they're in cycles. They might be 60, 90 day cycles. Uh, the idea is eventually you'll have some legacy campaigns that work. Uh, those will just kind of run alongside while you're continuing to test because all of these trends are changing, people's needs are changing, people are getting more custom, you know, uh, and even the economy is changing. So people have to adjust their prices. So sometimes you just can't let something run, especially if you include your price in your copy or the creative. So all these little levers are constantly changing. So I, yeah, it'd be great if you always just have legacy campaigns and they run forever, but you should be trying different angles. Um, one of the big things actually, since we just talked about it, uh, COVID started, uh, I hate to bring that up again, but we were working with the snack foods brand and the, one of the biggest things when those first two months came in, it, it was a, a real pain to go to the grocery store. Things were getting sold out. It was just a pain to leave uh, your house, uh, just in general. So what we did, we kind of just created a promo around bulk orders so people could buy in bulk, get it delivered to their front door, uh, and at a discount. And for this particular um, you know, snack food brand, they probably had one of the best months they've had in the last five years just by doing that and kind of reacting to the market, reacting to what's going on in the world. So you have to leave room to pivot as well. Yeah, and I... I- Love that about small businesses and these these solopreneurs and hustlers is because we can pivot. So if we're going to test, how do we test on a budget? And the reason I say that is because, you know, a big company like Nestle or Coca-Cola or Nike, like they could spend tons of money on a lot of different campaigns over nine months. And at the end of nine months, look at it and go, okay, this worked. Let's stick with this one, you know, yada, yada. 
But as small brands, we don't always have a large budget. And it's not just the budget of the ads. It's the budget of the creative because we Mm -hmm. have to have TikTok videos made and Instagram Reels videos made and Instagram posts and Facebook videos. And like, and sometimes that gets really expensive. So for small brands, what's your piece of advice to them about dabbling on multiple platforms, multiple channels, multiple types of ads, multiple search engines without completely wrecking your budget on the creative being produced as well as the ads being run? With yeah, the understanding uh, that sometimes you can't measure success for many, many months. That's a great question and a great way to look at it, especially for smaller brands. Because if we're looking at you know, uh, you know Nestle, uh, we're looking at Cliff Bars, we're looking at Nike, uh, they can afford to test. Obviously, they have the funds to where they can be very dialed in and they know how the market's going to work out. So they can uh, basically go in leading with the, you know, their best first impression. Uh, but small brands can do that as well. And the good news is, especially for digital marketing, uh, even Facebook reported this, I think, in one of their quarterly reports last year is, uh, you know, lower quality content is going to perform better for you versus the higher quality qu- content. I think, uh, you know, higher quality, uh, uh, <laughs> sorry, so higher quality content, sort of the, something you might see on like a TV commercial or even like a YouTube ad. I think those are great. Those are great for branding, building loyalty, letting people know like, oh, okay, they have the budget. They're like a real brand and they're operating. Yeah, there's a time and place for it. Exactly. But if you're just doing regular, you know, uh, media placements like on the news feed and stories, uh, a simple selfie video will go a lot farther than trying to spend five grand on a very polished graphic design. Not ruling that out by any means, but if you are a smaller brand and you're trying to grow, Uh, then pay attention to the trends and where you're at. Like, don't go on Canva and use one of their templates and then plaster that everywhere. Uh, You know, maybe just that static image with some text with a call to action might work on Facebook. You don't want to do that on TikTok. On TikTok, it's going to be more native. It's going to be more, uh, it shouldn't interrupt the user's experience while they're on that platform. Our whole idea uh, when we're advertising on the platforms is, you know, Facebook and TikTok, Instagram, they want us to keep the users on the platform. They want to make sure we're showing them a product or a service that they want and engage with. So that's when you have great engagement metrics. You are getting cheaper traffic. You're finding the, you know, the right people for conversions who want or are actually interested in your brand or your offer. So we need to play into those biases as well. So we're using a lot of creativity. We're using a lot of intuition. We're trying a lot of things, but we have to use data too. We have to actually (laughs) sit down and figure out what's working. Now, one thing that I see a lot of with companies, and it doesn't matter if it's an e-com business or a service business or whatever, is sometimes we make judgments of success or failure based on poor expectations. All right. Mm -hmm. And if we have poor expectations, um, we're not knowing how to correctly judge this thing as success or failure. Should we spend more money on it? Are we missing a big opportunity? What? So as we are continuing to invest in and, and buy traffic on multiple platforms, what are the correct metrics to look at to determine if this is working or not? And you don't have to get too deep. And I know you can go six hours on metrics, but like give us oh, a yeah. high level indication of what metrics should we actually be looking at to know if this is working or not? Yeah, that's a fun and difficult question and another one that we kind of deal with like every week. Um, So yeah, definitely when you're going for an omnipresence way, um, really what you're wanting to look at is we all pay attention to conversions first, conversion rate, your AOV. uh, Basically anything sales related is what everyone's going to look at first. But uh, maybe you're not seeing that. Maybe the tracking's getting lost or maybe uh, it just isn't populating. Maybe it just isn't there. So, uh, yes, balancing your expectations when you go into each platform is going to be crucial as well, especially if you're brand new. You need to season your account, so to speak. You need to season your pixel, the data, set the algorithm up to where it is trying to find the people that you want. So uh, if you're not seeing those conversions, then maybe uh, we're going for engagement. We're going for traffic. Uh, Those are those touch points that you need where eventually they will Google you or they'll look up or uh, they'll sign up for your email. So just don't rule yourself out if you're not seeing a great return on ad spend right away, but then start looking, how many clicks am I getting? What's my CPM like? What's it like to get those thousand impressions? Uh, If I'm posting videos, how much of that video are people actually watching? Uh, So you might just, uh, you know, beat yourself out. It might be your own worst uh, enemy and beat out yourself from this competition just by ruling yourself out or cutting something off too early. 
where you you just said it earlier, where it, maybe three months later, you finally purchase something, which I've done as well. It's like, oh, I've seen this brand for a while and I finally want to get it. Uh, today's the day, but it's not going to populate back to that campaign or on that day. So you're not really sure where it came from. So that's where the media efficiency ratio comes in a little bit into play. But uh, back to the metrics, engagement metrics are solid in every platform. So whenever they click off your uh, off the platform is when we kind of start losing that data. So we can see the video views in Facebook or YouTube and TikTok. We can see the clicks. We can see the reach and how much it costs. So that's hard data that's real. We can see it. And it's a good uh, health indicator on how your content, your brand, your creatives are being received by your targeted audience. And is there anything new or exciting happening in the world of attribution? And, you know, because we're talking about you can't always see this. You can't always track people. You can't always connect the dots. And for those of you who don't know what attribution is, it's basically a way to monitor the source of traffic, right? So a very common one that we all know is like cookies, right? So, so cookies is a type of attribution tracking system, but there are some that get very, very complex. Like we know that Amazon just added uh, last year, their new attribution system, where if I have a Pinterest post that highlights a product and pushes people to Amazon, I can actually track all the way through to figure out that that Pinterest post gave me a certain you know, number of sales or impressions. But in the world of attribution, because it sounds like a lot of what we're saying is like, well, we kind of have an idea, but we don't always know. So we need to make decisions the best that we can, but we don't always know. Is there anything new or exciting coming down the attribution pipeline that's going to help answer some of these questions? What I'm hoping and what I think will happen is eventually these uh, tracking issues are going to backfire on everyone. I think uh, with the ability not to target people based on what they're actually interested in. No, wait, what wait, wait. Like. You say tracking issues. You're talking about the ant or the the, the, the iOS updates. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, the iOS updates, and so, now the Android yeah. updates, and now the yeah, email. So it was updates. easier yeah. before then, but it's much more difficult now. Uh, yeah. So basically, it would just tell you exactly what somebody did on your website, where they browsed, what purchase yeah. they made, and for how much. But and you think it's going to backfire? I think it will backfire in the long term because even, you know, we're ads aren't going anywhere, right? We're going to see them no matter what. So I'd rather be advertised something I'm actually interested in and something that I'd like to learn about versus the highest bidder, which is probably what is going to eventually happen because all of these smaller businesses and brands, I've been hearing it, their CPAs are up by four or five times. That's going to kill your margins. There's no way you can last on Facebook ads that way. Especially if, uh, you know, you're not like us where we are in 15, 20 accounts throughout every month where we get to see all the different angles and ways to kind of navigate these waters and kind of, you know, withstand these changes. Um, So one of the other interesting ways uh, to answer your first question, I haven't seen anything really reputable that actually works 100 percent. We'll use some third party tools for tracking. Uh, We'll use offline events. Um, There's also people who will you know, host their websites on their own servers. So they have way more control over the data, but it doesn't mean it's going to pass over to, you know, the platform accurately either way. Um, So there are little ways to navigate around that as well. So maybe you do have an offer. Maybe it's a, let's say, I'll take one of my supplement stores for an example with, uh, you know, Astro Flavor doing a huge thing with this testosterone booster. Um, So if we wanted to figure out which channel was working, we could create one funnel, maybe we use like Zipify or something. We make one product funnel that is specifically for Facebook. So the only way people would even land on that page would be from Mm. a Facebook ad. Then we do the same thing. We duplicate it and make it for Google, make it for TikTok, make it for- And not even just the ad, but like on the Facebook, you're putting a different visual call to action. So it's not gettestosterone.com, it's boostedtestosterone.com. And if anybody searches boosted testosterone, you know that that was traffic coming from visualized, imprinted Facebook. Right. There's no other way somebody could get there. So it's fair to say all the traffic to this landing page is only from our advertising efforts. And then any conversions or anything that happens on that page, we can say, okay, from this camp or these bunch, uh, you know, batch of campaigns that were running to this landing page, this is the Facebook traffic. This is how they reacted. So then, uh, I mean, it's a couple extra steps for sure, but at least you can see that hard data of actually what is happening. So it's kind of focusing on things that you can, can control in the whole process of your business versus uh, things that you can't, like the tracking. Like there's no one uh, that I've even come across with, and I, I deal with a lot of media buying groups, a lot of agencies, 
And uh, a lot of it we're just, you know, shrug shoulders. Just, well, well, we'll hope it works and we'll do our best. Uh, we'll try and match everything up. We'll use UTM parameters. We'll use third party tools. But I haven't seen anything that is 100 percent accurate like it used to be a year ago. That's that's a lot of stuff. I've been taking notes here and a lot of different ideas and concepts. And uh, like I said before, I love the idea of, you know, putting minds together and, and convincing people that maybe there are more than one way, you know, to do things. Um, like I said, going into this, I thought, well, hey, this is going to be like, this is going to be conflict because I have my way, you have your way. But it sounds like we're very much aligned in that we can focus on multiple things as long as we're honing in and primarily focusing on the ones that work, the ones that don't. And also, I think it's interesting that we both agree that not everything's trackable. Like sometimes you just can't figure out every single thing. And that's one of the hardest, um, I don't know, concepts to try to explain. Like I work as a consultant for service-based companies, right? Mm -hmm. Banners on ceilings at trade shows. Like how do we quantify that? How do we describe that? And sometimes uh, we do have to just look at the whole holistic thing and say, is what we're doing working? Is our entire marketing budget working? We don't know every little piece. And yeah, there may be a piece that we're spending on that doesn't work, but we don't know that. So we don't want to start shutting stuff off because we may kill off something that we actually need. So yeah, um, exactly. Very interesting philosophical thoughts, you know, like strategic <laughs> thoughts. Well, and a lot of times we have we, to get we creative. Do, <laughs> yeah. The word, the word that you use granular, like we try to get too granular and have all the answers. And sometimes the answer is that we just don't have all the answers and that's important too. So as we get wrapped up here, is there anything else that you'd like to, to kind of conclude with as a piece of advice for people that are thinking about getting started on media buying? Like they've never started this journey. They don't even know where to start. They don't know where to look. They're overwhelmed. They're confused and they don't know how to take that first step. What is the first step? Uh, I mean, it kind of comes back to us, uh, you know, plan the work, work the plan. But before you can even start that piece, um, you know, really go through uh, your ideal target audience. Um, you don't have those large budgets, so uh, spray and pray probably isn't going to work as well. So, you know, it, these are first impressions you're making. So do your research, pay for the extra advice if you need to, uh, you know, lead with, uh, you know, your best foot forward, basically. Uh, I just see too many people get discouraged and just say, oh, this probably isn't going to work. Uh, but they haven't really put in that right effort or they just thought we could throw something up like, uh, again, a year or two ago, uh, a year or two ago, uh, little things like that would work and you could get those CPAs. But it just isn't like that uh, anymore. So you really need to put a little bit more effort into your strategy, thinking about the user journey um, and just kind of getting really dialed in on each platform. Love it. it. Makes a lot of sense. We appreciate you being on. If anybody has any more uh, kind of questions for you. They can probably track you down on all of the social media stuff, right? Kenny Gray. Uh, um, yeah, Kenny Gray or Great Media, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. I'm I'm all over there. And Great Media is spelled G-R-A-Y-T media. So play yes. off your last name, <laughs> Great with a Y, which I think is really great. So, yeah, <laughs> <see that laughs> thanks there. for spelling really it out. Great. I liked it. Great, <laughs> G-R-A-Y-T, M-E-D-I-A, Great Media. We appreciate you being on. We appreciate... Uh, the conversation, I know that this was probably a little bit more conversational than a lot of our podcast episodes because I like fighting through these ideas and concepts and I like asking questions for myself and letting you listeners kind of overhear. Sometimes that's uh, that's more valuable than just having a guest jump on and just start spitting, you know, kind of the script. So I appreciated this. Kenny, if there's any ever anything I can do for you, holler at me, let me know. We appreciate you being on and we'll see all of you listeners on next week's episode.